Adobe is in dire need of competition when it comes to a lot of their software. And they definitely do, however, have some actual competitors uh, that do an awesome job, but sometimes uh, this is usually done for less, but not always achieving the same stuff uh, that Adobe Suite actually can. I'm someone who switched from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve Studio. So can I switch from Photoshop to ACDC Photo Studio Ultimate? Well, let's go ahead and find that out. For more great content like this, just make sure to subscribe to our channel and then turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss any upload. Also leave a like and a comment down below with your thoughts on this video. And there's also going to be a merch store where you can buy some sweet monochrome Tech Summit merch. Links to everything down below. And let's begin by talking about the interface. At first, it might appear a little bit weird or at the very least somewhat intimidating because it shows you the things that you can open on the side and some of the recently visited locations on your computer but once you've started a project you're pretty much good to go and you'll essentially start off with a photo of your choice i'm going to be taking the unedited version of my profile picture here on youtube and even on twitch now you're also going to find a couple of different panels that you can switch between pretty similar to how it is in resolve and it just allows you to target very specific features of this software we're going to be diving right into exactly how it is that you use this program as i think that that is just going to be a much more useful way of reviewing this program however i just want to go ahead and go over the very nitty-gritty and specific for the simple stuff right off the bat. And you're going to have this panel called Autos, which scans your entire computer for every image on your computer. And it's just going to be incredibly handy and helpful as you don't have to look too hard for any of your images. It just kind of shows you everything right off the bat and loads it up for you, which is actually a pretty unique feature, I think. It's not something I have seen from Photoshop, for instance. And you're going to get other panels like the Develop panel and the Edit panel and things of the like. However, I'm going to be going onto my computer and do doing a little bit of tweaking and editing of my profile picture using ACDC Photo Studio. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump right in and I will give you my live thoughts on that. So over there. And don't write then. So now we're going to be taking a much deeper look into the software ACDC Photo Studio Ultimate from 2020, of course. First thing that you're going to notice over here is that you actually have a bunch of panels. So you have a manage panel, a photos panel, a view panel, a develop panel, an edit panel. The greater focus is going to be on these two, which are going to be on develop and edit. So the manage panel is actually like just going to handle where all of your images are going to be. And in terms of photos, this is going to help you find exactly where everything is as is. So this program is actually capable of searching through my entire computer and searching for every single picture on it just so that I can choose one to work with right off the bat. So firstly, we're going to go ahead and focus on an image that I took myself. In this case, I'm going to focus on edited version of my profile picture. So I'm going to go ahead and pick any one of these. And so we're going to go ahead and pick this one over here, which should take us directly into the view panel. This is going to allow us to look at the entire picture. And then we're going to add a couple of presets over here. Like you can do things like rotate it around, for instance, and it does take a little bit of processing as well. We're gonna want to rotate it back around, obviously, since this is how we're going to want to work on this image. And then you have a couple of other options, like you have a selection tool and the like, if you just want to work on a very specific area over here. And you also have a couple of presets over on this side. However, we're not going to work too much with these as I'm mostly interested in just working on the develop and edit sections over on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on develop firstly, since I would like to touch on this section primarily. And so now that we're here, uh, the primary concentration of this entire panel is just going to be the sliders and the like that you're going to get on the left side of your image or of the main canvas and things like that. So for example, like you can adjust uh, things like the exposure and the highlights and the fill lights, which is actually a very nice one as a matter of fact. And you can adjust contrast and saturation and the vibrance. And these are just going to be like the general uh, color correction and lighting tools. So uh, the develop panel primarily focuses on that front. And the edit panel is going to focus on pretty much everything else. So like I'm removing blemishes and that sort of thing. I'm watermarking and removing red eye for instance and that sort of thing and blurring and noise reduction or adding noise if you wanted to and that sort of thing. So like it's not so much on the color correction side as you would take care of that over on this side. This is starting to look a little bit more like traditional Photoshop or even like Lightroom. And I really love that this program kind of just puts 
all of these tools right in front of you instead of hiding them away uh, before we go ahead and actually move onto this section which by the way like you do have layers at uh, the layer editor is going to be over on this side and the adjustment layers are going to be available to you over here like immediately down in this section and i really 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 like that so you got like exposure and levels and curves and light eq the white balance for instance the vibrance uh, the color EQ, which again, like you can go back to develop for that if you really wanted to. However, this will create adjustment layers that are readily available to you. And this is more so uh, just a quicker panel if you if you know that you just wanted to do color work. One of the most useful tools on this section is also going to be the fill light, for instance, which, uh, for example, if you feel like you've actually gone too much shadows, you can give yourself a fill light. Now, granted, this is going to be an, an artificial one, so don't go too crazy with it, obviously. However, this level is actually good enough. Increase the highlights if you wanted to as well. And I really like how this looks over here. You can go ahead and change around the contrast if you wanted to add just a little bit more of that. And I just want to crank that up just a little bit. I think I want to keep the color temperature exactly as it is. However, like you can maneuver around it if you wanted to, like if you wanted it to favor a warmer side or a cooler side and the like. But I actually like it kind of exactly where it is though. I might actually kind of just like shows off all of the imperfections on your face and reducing it is going to smooth everything out. And as you can see over here, I almost look like a painting when I bring it all down. However, I can smooth out everything in this image without having to make myself look too artificial. And I really like that. It's a very sp specific slider as well. And the vibrance, you can also go ahead and do that. And I'm going to bump it up just a little bit. And you've also got a dehaze tool if you wanted to, but we're not going to mess around too much with that either. And you've also got over here, like things like light equalizers, for example, like if you wanted to to actually get rid of the shadows or if you wanted to em emphasize them a little bit more, you could, and I actually really like how this looks so far. If you wanted to emphasize the midtone some more or actually get rid of them. If we come back over, over to this section, for instance, now we can take a look at a bunch of different tools over on this side, as I mentioned earlier. And like, for example, if I wanted to add things like, let's say, like maybe I just wanted to increase the exposure. There's actually going to be a meter available to me right away, and it's going to open up it's not going to take a ton of effort on your computer's end, from what I can tell. You can also just do auto contrast, and it's, it's probably just going to keep it at zero, as it's already very well exposed, I think, already. You can increase the contrast if you really wanted to. However, I'm going to go ahead and keep these at zero. And some of those tools that you did see from earlier are going to be available right here, right in this section. And over on this side, uh, you, can, uh, you can just do cancel, in order to get rid of that if you don't like the work that you've done over on this side you can pick between a bunch of different things like i'm actually gonna go ahead and click on skin tune since i'm very interested in seeing what it offers so i can just do skin smoothing if i wanted to it just feels like this program offers uh, the most useful parts of photoshop and it puts them right on your face and it just makes them available to to you and it's not overwhelming by any means at all in terms of performance, you've a you've actually got a very enjoyable experience here. In a lot of ways, it is much more bare bones than Photoshop, which means that uh, if you're just a photo editor, you, know, you don't have to deal with any of the drawing features from Photoshop that might actually get in the way or that might take precedence when you're just trying to get to those photo editing tools in particular. And it's going to perform pretty smoothly from my experience as well. Like there's going to be a little bit of stuttering maybe, and this is a pretty powerful PC, but that stuttering is just going to come when you're switching between panels and it's really not that big of a deal. It doesn't use up a ton of CPU power from any of my testing at least, and it's not even that crazy when it comes to RAM consumption either. So pretty cool in terms of performance. And the software on its own is also very affordable. So you actually have the option of either paying for, for a monthly, yearly, the same thing as you would with Photoshop, or you can just buy it outright. You can just get yourself a permanent license to it. And since it often goes on sale, this is actually the method I would probably go for. I'm somebody who actually really prefers to own his own software. I like owning my own programs. I don't like renting them, which is why I switched to Resolve Studio 16 from Premiere Pro because you can't really own any of the programs on the Adobe suite anymore, at the very least not to my knowledge. So that is honestly a big win and it does make it way more affordable than Photoshop in the long run if you're just a photo editor. However, I do have some suggestions for making the software more user-friendly. I like the idea of the panels being on the side for switching between different aspects or editing modes, but I honestly like a more traditional look to the home screen. And just a little more organization here 
would actually be quite nice and I would like for it to emphasize that, that this is where you search for uh, for picture to edit since you don't really start with a blank canvas or anything like that like how you would in Photoshop so that would be pretty nice to have I would also really love to see a mobile version of this program since you do get to buy it right at the very least one that works on the iPad Pro at the moment it is only available on Windows and I do wish that this had a better stylus support as well because even though if you already have a drawing monitor then technically inherently it is going to support a stylus that is just going to be on the display not necessarily on the software and when I tried it it was actually kind of a disaster so I would love to see some actual stylus support and I understand that this isn't a drawing software by any means. It's mostly just a photo editing program. However, now that stylus tip does allow for much greater precision than what you would get while just using a mouse. So I would really like to see that in the future. And these here are just going to be some pretty minor complaints and things that can definitely improve in the future through software updates. And this software feels very good in its usability. If I'm completely honest, I was very surprised with it. You actually get a lot of control of your images with this, and getting to adjust so many different things right at your fingertips. It doesn't hide anything from you, and that is something that I wish Photoshop did a lot less of. ACDC does a good job when it comes to just showing you all of those tools, having them in front of you, and it's mostly because it is primarily just a photo editor and that is going to be its primary focus, so I can afford to actually do that. Its simplicity makes it so worth it to me, in my opinion. And it's definitely the type of competition that Photoshop needed when it comes to photo editors. ACDC also offers other types of software, like they have their own video editor and encoder, for example, so they're working on developing a really cool suite of products that could potentially replace your Adobe subscription and some of these are actually available for you to own as a matter of fact you don't just have to rent them if you don't want to and I would urge you to actually give this program a try because it is honestly pretty cool highly recommended at least to go ahead and give it a try I very much hope that you enjoyed this video and if you wanted to check out this program then then I will be leaving links to it down in the description so that you can go ahead and download it or purchase it or rent it out and depending on your persuasion down and below so uh, that is all going to be up to you and I highly recommend that you give it a try that you even try out a couple of their other software in case you're looking at any other substitutes any of the other programs within the Adobe suite I like video encoder and that sort of thing and links to everything below and with that said this has been Francisco from Tech Summit thank you so much for watching and I will be seeing you all later have a good one enjoy <laughs>